Good morning, PS17. Happy April. Today is April 1st, 2020. I love the month of April. Spring is starting to, to spring is starting. The, the little buds are coming on the trees and the, the grass is getting a little bit greener. Take the opportunity to look out the window today, whatever window you're looking out, and just notice the little changes that are starting. Notice little changes that are starting. I see the sun out. I see the clouds breaking. Um, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day, family. So if everybody could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. We're standing tall, we're facing our flag, we're placing our hands over our hearts. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for our school mission statement. Say it loud and proud. We are here to be literate, innovative, and proficient scholars who will participate in rich academic learning in a nurturing environment where we will rise. This will be accomplished by creating collaborative and supportive teaching and learning systems involving the entire PS17 community. Okay, family. On Monday, I told you that when we transition into April, we're going to um, move away from some fiction for a little bit. Not a long time, just a little bit. Um, we're going to be reading some nonfiction and a little poetry, and I'll tell you why. So April 22nd is Earth Day, right? And so we're going to be reading a little bit about um, creatures on the Earth, about um, composting, about decomposition um, from a book called Rotten. Vultures, beetles, slime, and nature's other decomposers. Very cool book. Um, we're also going to be reading some poetry because April is also poetry month. So um, I'm going to start with today's book. It's by Anita Sanchez, and there's beautiful illustrations by Gilbert Ford. Um, you do the same thing when you start a nonfiction text as when you start a fiction text. You sort of orient yourself to the text just to see what it's going to be about. You do it in a slightly different way, though, because there's different features in nonfiction. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the cover again. It says, Rotten, Vultures, Beetles, Slime, and Nature's Other Decomposers. And I'm noticing that the illustrator sort of gave those vultures, beetles, slime, and other nature's other decomposers, some like the worms wearing sunglasses. There's like a mushroom there smiling. Um, it's sort of funny illustrations, right? So I'm, I'm thinking that we're gonna learn about things in nature, everything from things that fly to things that are underground, right? Um, so that's the first thing I'm noticing. Um, Nonfiction texts also have a table of contents often. Um, sometimes chapter books do also, not always, but they do. And so this sort of um, tells us, um, we're gonna learn about things that get rotten, I'm assuming. This sort of breaks down though, the order of how we're gonna learn those things and the topics, the subtopics that we're gonna learn about. Um, so that look at, take a look at the titles for a second. Okay, I'm noticing that there's like a little beginning section um, that doesn't have a chapter. So I'm thinking that that's important that we peruse that. Okay, and then there's all these interesting chapters here. I see um, dung beetles rolling rotten, scavengers eating rotten, fungus slurping rotten. Um, welcome to the Rotten Log Hotel. That sounds a little funny. Um, the Mighty Earthworm Moving Rotten. I don't think of earthworms as mighty. They're so small. That's interesting. I wonder why they're, the author is saying that they're mighty. Um, what's rotting at your house? What? A Tale of Two Sandwich Crusts? I'm thinking that this is going to be a very interesting book. The other part of a book that... Um, is part of a nonfiction book, excuse me, there's often a glossary. So there's um, a list of important words here. So these are just some of the things I'm noticing about the book. I'm also now, um, we're not going to do a whole lot of reading about the book today. You're just going to see us taking some uh, a look at some of the pictures today to get us excited. So when we start reading about the introduction about a rotten world, I'm noticing that the, the, the introduction to this part of the book is rotten world. It's a rotten world. And there's um, a person there, looks like they're in dirt and doing something in the dirt, right? Okay. 
very interesting pictures here. There's one about the vultures. Right, so it's a nonfiction text, but the illustrations look a little bit cartoonish, right? They look like they're cartoons. Oh, looks like there's going to be some something about animals that are live in the water, too. That's interesting. Remember, we talked about fungus. We saw one of the chapters was about fungus. So I'm thinking this is like mushrooms, it looks like. So let's read a little bit about from the introduction, okay? Um, I'm noticing that there's a word that's coming up, decomposition. And I know a lot of us are working with number bonds right now. Everybody from kindergarten through fifth grade, pre-K hasn't started yet, but you'll start when you get to kindergarten. And remember when you decompose a number, you start with a large number on top, or just a number on top. So let's say five, let's take a number like five. You can decompose five, right? A lot of us are decomposing five into two parts. You can decompose it into more parts. But if we take five, one of the ways we can decompose five so that there's, there's two parts to five is like three and two. So we take five and we decompose it or we break it down into something like three and two. We can also take five and break it down into something like one and four or four and one, right? Um, you don't just have to decompose it into two parts, but a lot of us are using those number bonds where you start with a whole and you decompose it into two parts. Decomposition means a little bit more than that also. It says decomposition is happening everywhere. It's happening in your backyard, your house, and even in your teeth. What? Things decompose right in front of our noses from the yogurt fermenting in the fridge to the food inside our bodies. Hmm. Decomposition is a part of nature. Decomposing seems like the last stop on the food chain, but nature doesn't move in a straight line. It's like a circle. After decomposition comes new life. Kind of reminds me of the song from the Lion King, The Circle of Life. I'm wondering if we can make some connections to that song, The Circle of Life. So when we start tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit about, when we keep reading tomorrow, we're going to start digging in a little bit to what decomposition means and what some of the chapters in this book, how they all connect to that concept of decomposition, okay? So I want you to remember, just like in Eureka Math, decomposition is something that's breaking down, okay? It's more than a number bond. It's, we're not talking about number bonds with, with, in this book but you can think about it as like breaking down. So I'm thinking we're gonna learn about food that breaks down, um, other things that break down, and it's something about the circle of life. So we're gonna learn a little bit that, about that this week as we continue with our book, Rotten. PS 17, we wish you a wonderful day, a happy learning day, a happy day with your families. Please remember that as always, we love you.